Shea Stadium, home of the New York Jets, opened in 1964 when the Jets met the Broncos on the first day of the season. Fourteen years later, Jet fans finally got a chance to see another home opener as the NFL opened a landmark 16-game regular season last weekend. The Jets are an improving team, one worth keeping an eye on, if only to gaze at their new uniforms. But it's more than the new shirts and helmets that have the fans excited. Although the Jets won only three times in 1977, the team showed marked improvement in every phase of the game, a tribute to their second-year head coach, Walt Michaels, who has coached the Jets into a very competitive team. Michael's opposing coach today is merely a living legend, Don Shula, whose Dolphins are expected to be in the thick of the division race again. But Miami hopes were dealt a severe setback when Bob Greasy was lost for at least half the season with a knee injury suffered in the Dolphins' last preseason game. Walt Michaels' quarterbacking situation, however, is a strong one. Third-year pro Richard Todd appears ready to claim a spot as one of the elite young quarterbacks in the league. The Miami starter at quarterback will be Don Strzok, who in his fifth season actually has less game experience than the younger Todd. And it is on Strzok's performance that most experts figure today's game and perhaps Miami's season will hinge. I'm Al Meltzer, and this is the NFL Game of the Week. The New York Jets versus the Miami Dolphins. The Jets' defense is the question mark. It is a very young defense, one that Bob Greasy has picked apart in the past. But with Don Strzok at quarterback, Miami figured to test New York on the ground, a test the Jets aced on the Dolphins' first series. If the Jet defense is a question mark, the New York offense is an exclamation point. Peopled by outstanding young players at the skill positions and led by Richard Todd, who came up throwing against the Dolphins. After a screen to Kevin Long carried into Miami territory, Todd's second pass attempt carried into the end zone as he dropped a perfect pass over two Miami defenders into the hands of bomb snatcher supreme, Wesley Walker. As important as the seven to nothing lead was the fact that the Jets had shown they could score and Strzok was going to have to throw some. A situation that brought disastrous results on Miami's second series when Mike Hennigan intercepted and returned to the Miami 25. Hennigan is the Jets' latest middle linebacker tryout, and he had made a big play in his first start. In effect, he had taken advantage of the Dolphins' new quarterback, for Strzok had attempted to force a pass between two linebackers and paid for it. The upstart Jets had a big break, and they very nearly took full advantage of the turnover. But Todd's pass to Jerome Barkham was tipped away at the last instant, and New York settled for a Pat Leahy field goal and a 10-0 lead after four minutes. Late in the first period, Jet linebacking struck Strzok again. Pressured, Strzok threw a little short, and Greg Buttle went high to intercept his pass and give the Jets excellent field position again. a third-year pro from linebacker state, also known as Penn State, is beginning to get all pro notices. Todd, number 14, offered his congratulations and then set out to improve on the field position with a fine touch passing performance. Todd's long ball arm makes his pump fake very believable. Another angle on this same play 
shows a strong pump fake by Todd and a wide open Kevin Long in the flat. Todd DeLong gained 17 yards. And after a run, the Jet quarterback came back to the left flat with a screen to Clark Gaines good for 13 more yards. Again reviewing the play shows Todd dropping deep, then merely flicking the ball to Gaines, who reached the Miami 11-yard line. But again, the Jets were unable to take full advantage of a turnover. Miami's defense rose up to halt the Jet march and forced another Leahy field goal. From 22 yards out, Leahy was true, and the Jets had a surprising 13-0 lead over the Dolphins. When Greasy went down, the point spread on the Dolphin Jet game also plummeted. Miami was still favored, however, and the 13-0 deficit was certainly not insurmountable. Experts awaited the telltale cracks and groans of the Jet defense weakening. Those sounds were heard, but it was the cracks of solid Jet hits and the groans of Miami ball carriers, as New York called it every Dolphin march. The Jet linebackers had already provided two big plays. The defensive line had hurried Strzok into an interception, and Joe Klecko led good pressure against Strzok throughout the first half. Nine-year pro Wayne Moore could not handle Klecko, number 73, who had a great game against the Dolphins. Klecko, a sixth-round draft pick from Temple University, was a pleasant surprise for the Jets last season, getting at least one sack in every game he started. And he appears ready to have an even better second season. Even the supposedly weak Jet secondary came up strong, holding Strzok to 61 yards passing in the first half. For the Dolphins, only one thing was working. Number 24, Delvin Williams, whom Miami acquired from San Francisco. Miami traded for Williams to get the breakaway back they have lacked since Mercury Morris left, and in his first game as a Dolphin, he would seem to be the answer with his quickness and natural instincts to find open area. Williams running helped open up the passing game for Strzok, and in the second period, Miami finally mounted a successful drive goalward. From the Miami 42, Williams started left, reversed his field, and took off on a spectacular 58-yard run. Williams' run was a planned play, not a broken one. The speedy running back had done just what the Dolphins had hoped he would do. The extra point was blocked. Miami now trailed by only 13-6. But if they thought the Jets were ready to crack, they were sorely mistaken. On the kickoff following Williams' score, Bruce Harper, the AFC's combined offensive yardage leader last season, crashed out to the Jet 41. Harper stayed in the game and added 25 rushing yards to his 39 return yards on two consecutive carries. Harper had accounted for 64 yards. And from the one, Todd made a strong play fake, rolled left, and hit wide open Mickey Schuler. Schuler, a rookie from Penn State, had entered the game to give the Jets a two tight end offense. That and Todd's strong play fake had sucked in middle linebacker Bob Matheson, number 53, leaving Schuler wide open.
The Jets led 20 to 6 at halftime, and the Miami Dolphins knew they were in for a tough time. New York had not folded after Delvin Williams' touchdown. Instead, they had come back with a score of their own. When Miami entered the locker room at halftime, they knew they had to find some answers. Surprisingly, the Jets were not surprised by their halftime lead, and they jogged out in eager anticipation of continuing their ambush on the still unwary Dolphins. Six plays into the second half, and it was tightly protected Todd going airmail all the way to make the score a now embarrassing 27 to six. A repeat shows that Todd had enough time in the pocket to count all his chains. The Dolphins' rush just wasn't there, but as the ball arc downfield, Wesley Walker was streaking along like the loneliest man in town. The play covered 43 yards and sent the Jets' faithful into throws of delight. Almost anyone could tell that it was now just a matter of time before their big green team would own one of the bigger upsets of opening day 78. For Wesley Walker, his four catches for the day averaged 26 and a half yards. And he was batting 500 in the touchdown department. Opponent secondaries will have to keep a hand and an eye on the Todd Walker connection in future weeks. When Miami got the ball, Dell Williams was all. And when he came from the 49ers, he promised to add another dimension to Miami's attack. On this particular Sunday, he was the attack. The Jets' defense has developed a mean streak somewhere between now and last year. They like to hit. They like to swarm. They don't like to give up yards without a fight. So if you're going to pay the fiddler, you may as well dance. The Dolphins found the Jets particularly feisty near their own end zone, where Noam Boulash had the distinct displeasure of being butted by Buttle. It gives a man pause to think what he's doing there, or if he really is there after all. Buttle wasn't the only Jet with a B in his bonnet, and sometimes the mean Green's attitude led to slight differences of opinion. A repeat of that last play shows that Nat Moore's treatment was unceremonious and perhaps a tad overzealous on the part of strong safety Schaefer Suggs, number 23. But the intimidation seemed to work because Don Strock had trouble concentrating on his main objective, which was to get points. A repeat of that last play shows that Strock was rushed on the throw and overthrew a sure six to Moore. Despite the perils of the Skyway, Strock continued to attack the Jets secondary and continued to be rebuffed. On this play, rookie cornerback Bobby Jackson from Florida State did the honors. And then the persistent but misguided Strock almost gave it away to Sugg. Taking a hiatus from the air attack, the Dolphins tried number 27, Gary Davis, on the overland route. And he took it a hard six yards to the one. From there, Strzok got everyone confused enough to allow Nat Moore a wide open spot and an easy six points. Number 22, Burgess Owens, was fooled by the play fake and everyone else came up on the rollout by Strzok. Everyone but Mr. Moore who made it 27 to 12.
When the Jets got the ball, they put together a most amazing series of plays. With number 33, Kevin Long, leading the way, the Jets ran and passed for 93 yards on a 15-play drive and ended up kicking a 46-yard field goal. How did they manage a 139-yard drive? Well, the four penalties on one series didn't help the scoring effort even a little. Despite the miscues, Richard Todd kept firing, and number 21, Clark Gaines, kept motoring. The cavalcade stalled after Todd hit number 83, Jerome Barkham, in the middle. And number five, Pat Leahy, was called upon to drill his third of the game to extend the Jets' lead to 30 to 13. <laughs> Certainly not to be overlooked on this upset Sunday was the 24-carat performance of the New York defense. They pressured Strzok all afternoon, gave him little breathing room, and when he did air it out, they were right there to take a diving try at it. A replay shows that on this particular effort, Strzok was well protected, but so was intended receiver Duriel Harris, number 82. Bobby Jackson's great effort on a tough try was about the only time the Jets came up empty all day. When you're hot, you're hot. On Sunday, Richard Todd was a flamethrower. A repeat of this play to rookie Derek Gaffney once again shows all-day protection, followed by an on-the-money throw to a wide-open seam in the zone defense. Finally, it was Miami's turn to catch a break, and they did, when Wesley Walker caught his third scarring strike. It was a break for Miami because, despite the joyful Jets, the play was recalled for a holding infraction. Nevertheless, the play is worth another look, just to watch the underdog Jets line push the big bullies all over the lot. It all looked so effortless and easy. One had to wonder if perhaps Coach Walt Michaels should have been installed as the new Pope, for he certainly had worked many miracles in New York already. There's no getting around the fact that on Sunday, the Jets were a polished, poised team deserving a victory. One of Todd's rare bad breaks was a tip pass interception that ex coach Rick Volk, number 21, returned. And he soon found that even the Jets' offense can deal in ruggedness. But this struck to Harris completion was the only play of note in the otherwise stifled drive that followed. Now, with the game firmly under control, the Jets alternated grinded out guts football with stingers from Todd, who finished the day 17 of 25 for 245 yards. Pat Leahy chipped in his fourth field goal, and the lead ballooned to 33 to 13. Treating it now like a preseason game, coach Don Shula inserted number seven, Guy Benjamin at quarterback. The rookie from Stanford managed to put a little bounce in his team step. Right away, Benjamin showed an arm that will alarm some opponents as he whipped this one to rookie wide receiver Jimmy Cephalo from Penn State. A last-ditch touchdown to tight end Laird McCreary made the final 33-20, just within the bounds of respectability. Are the Jets in the running? Well, they sure were this time. And there's not a fan at Shea who doesn't think Richard Todd can lead them to glory. Sure, it's a long season, 
But for this week anyway, the Jets are at the top looking down at a lot of talented teams in the AFC East Division. And they are truly number one for now. <laughs>